Hi everyone, Darren from Ireland, and I'd like to introduce you to Draytech's range of PoE switches. There's currently four to choose from with a model to suit everyone's budget. In common, all have gigabit LAN ports with PoE, power over ethernet, VLAN capability and QoS. All also feature IEEE 802.2 AZ energy efficient ethernet, which will automatically detect idle clients and cable length to adjust the amount of power required. The higher end models add more PoE controls with the ability to set timers to power ports on or off at set times and switch power off automatically to ports connected to inactive devices. All models also feature a warning light to let you know if the PoE budget is maxed out and the status page in the GUI will also give you information about PoE usage as well as tons of other information and of course the configuration options. I'll include links below to test drives of the configuration menus. Starting off with the Vigor Switch P1092, it has 8 gigabit ethernet ports which allow up to 30 watts of PoE on each port, with a total power budget of 110 watts. What that means is you'll need to know the amount of power each device you intend to power up draws. If you have less than 8 devices and they draw less than 110 watts altogether, the P1092 switch is for you. It also features two SFP slots that's small form factor pluggable, which you can plug optic fiber modules into, which is ideal if you want to connect this switch into another network segment with optic fiber. It's a web smart switch, which provides automatic management of network traffic for maximum performance. It supports up to eight port based or tag based VLANs, which can be used to segregate network segments and optimize traffic. For critical types of network traffic like VoIP or video streaming, the P1092 features QoS controls to prioritise that traffic so it'll always perform at its best without being bogged down by other traffic. Rack mount brackets are included or you can just sit it on your desk or a shelf just like this. And it's a fanless design so it's nice and quiet. Let's power it up and plug a cable in. And our link light's on there. Okay, let's check out the GUI. Okay, so you'll need to configure your PC with a static IP, your 192.168.1.something, and then the switch can be found on 192.168.1.224. Okay, so our system information page has information about the MAC address, firmware version, loop status, PoE status, all that sort of thing. It's showing a link connection rate of 100 megabits per second there. That's just because my little laptop here only has a fast ethernet adapter. It doesn't have a gigabit one. Obviously if we had a gigabit one, we'd see gigabit speeds there. Down in our port statistics, it shows activity, link aggregation. We can disable or enable that with a few other options. Here's our VLAN settings. If we want to add a VLAN, we click on create new VLAN and that launches us into the uh, options here. We can change multicast. We can enable or disable that stuff there. PoE, here it shows us the amount of power we're currently using. Obviously none, because I haven't got any PoE devices plugged in here. We can change the port status to on or off here. So we can enable or disable each port. There's our QoS options, we've got our 8021P options, or port based there. And we can alter our priority along here. Rate limiting, storm control, loop prevention, port mirroring, system maintenance. Here's where we go to change the system password or upgrade firmware and so on. And that's that. Next up, the P2121 takes things up a notch starting with layer 2 management and a total power budget of 140 watts. It also has four SFP slots. If you don't need those, you can also uplink using these four additional gigabit ports or just use them as additional LAN ports. Just bear in mind these ports don't have PoE capability and it's either one or the other with the SFP slots. If you load the slots up, these gigabit ports won't work. Over here we also have a console port. For PoE, the P2121 adds the ability to schedule power on or off on ports, which can also be used to restart PoE devices, and it also has SNMP support. It's supported by the Vigor ACS central management system, so you can monitor and configure it remotely. Like the P1092, this one is also fanless, and also comes with rack mount brackets if you want to stick it in a rack. Let's power it up and check out the GUI. Okay, this one here, we've obviously got a lot more information on our dashboard. It shows what 
port we're connected to. It'll give us information about overall PoE usage down here. And then the bottom corner, we'll get a timeline of PoE consumption there. Uh, we've got our usual uh, device information here, firmware version and that sort of thing. And up the top here, note we've got an auto uh, logout after a period of time, which we can adjust up to 10 minutes. I'll just quickly flick through the screens. Uh, if you want to have a closer look at a particular screen, just pause the video, or you can click below and have a test drive of the GUI yourself. So in status, we've got our port bandwidth utilization, LLDP statistics, GVRP statistics, MLD snooping statistics, switch LAN gives us our general setup, IP addresses, IPv6 addresses, our VLAN management, port setting, mirror, I won't go through all of those. Link aggregation, again, a whole bunch of different settings you can play with. VLAN management, create VLAN. So you can add in your details there and click apply. Interface settings, voice VLAN, Mac VLAN, protocol VLAN, surveillance VLAN, and GVRP. Uh, in security, we've got our Radius and TAC ACS Plus. Management access authentication. Management access control, 802.1x, Mac authentication. Different settings you can play with there. Our port security. Currently disabled. Protected ports. We can change it up here. Storm control, properties, port setting, DOS, properties, DOS port setting, ACL, QoS, PoE, device check. Now schedule, oh, I get a warning there, so I'll put it in manual mode. And here we can, uh, Enable or disable ports and change priority. Our system maintenance, TRO69, that's for the bigger ACS control, LLDP, SNMP, access manager, time and date settings, backup manager, so you can set this to back up the configuration. Upgrade manager, firmware information, account manager, reset to factory default, just reboot. And we've also got some diagnostic tools here, cable diagnostics, ping test, ping test and syslog. Okay. Need more power or ports? The P1280 features web smart management again and has 24 PoE ports with a total power budget of 340 watts. Again, we have four combo ports, meaning either an additional four non-PoE gigabit ports or four SFP slots. It supports up to 256 tag port or voice based VLANs and 8 queues of QoS. Obviously here we step up to a fan based cooling system, but it's not particularly noisy, about the same as a desktop PC power supply. Powering it up. I can hear that, but I doubt my mic's going to pick it up. Okay, let's plug it in and check out the GUI. Right, this one has a very similar layout to the uh, P2121 that we just looked at. We have the same dashboard which shows us which port we're connected to, just where we've got uh, 24 ports now instead of just eight. And our uh, four optional ports there. We've got our PoE usage statistics and our consumption timeline, our cache and memory and CPU usage. We're back to web smart management here, so we haven't got quite as many options in the security or ACL, QoS is much the same, and our PoE configuration and properties. And finally, the P2280, which externally is much the same as the P1280, same 340 watt PoE budget and four combo ports. In addition, we also have a console port over here. Inside, we have layer two management, which also adds a lot of other configuration options like Radius and 802.1X port or Mac authentication and more advanced multicast options. 
The GUI adds a few more options over the P1280 as well. Let's plug it in and take a look. And we've got the same dashboard layout again and our PoE usage, cache memory, CPU statistics, a timeline of PoE consumption. Because we're into layer two management again, we've got a lot more options under our security controls here, much like the P2121. All the other details are much the same as the P2121. Just 24 ports and 340 watts of PoE to play with. Okay. So that is Draytech's range of PoE switches, all easily identified by the P at the start of their product names. They come with a two year back to base warranty and are available now from Draytech resellers. Again, I'll include test drives of the GUIs below to get a better idea of what these can do. For more information about all Draytech products, please check out our website at www.draytech.com.au. If you have any questions, please comment below or you can send us an email to sales at draytech.com.au or give us a call on 02983888899. Clickable links below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Give the bell a click too if you'd like a notification of new videos as they go up. Thanks and bye for now.